Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's so great to be back um, after a three-week hiatus of not having ISV Connect Live. Thank you for joining uh, today. My name is Brian Galicia. I lead our global ISV uh, business application team here at Microsoft. And it's my honor and pleasure to have uh, both Ravi and another Brian. Um, this might be a little confusing because we have two Brians on this call, but Brian A from uh, Matt Tasker. And before we get started, uh, again, just a couple of quick things that we always uh, do during the event. So one, uh, definitely we'd love to hear where you're watching from. Um, and in particular, because Ravi and Brian, it was, it's been fantastic because they actually are joining from Perth, Australia, and it's super late uh, in the day. So we truly appreciate them dialing in. So if you're from Australia, maybe you're from Perth, uh, maybe you're from somewhere in Europe, maybe most likely you're probably in the US somewhere. We'd love to uh, hear where you're watching from. So if you just want to go into the LinkedIn uh, comments, mm -hmm. type it in. We do have a quick shout out as we have uh, people join and are watching because we're always curious as to how uh, many people from all over the world are watching this. And then the second is that as we have the conversation and dialogue, um, if you want to use one of the icons um, in the LinkedIn window, like uh, support, love, whatever it may be, uh, this is also gives, an, give us a, gives us an opportunity to know that the content is resonating um, in the audience. So uh, in any case, so one last thing too, is if there's questions that you may have that sparks your interest or, uh, in the conversation, feel free also to put that in the comment window because uh, towards the end of the uh, this 30 minute dialogue, I'll be able to ask Robbie or Brian A uh, the specific question and you can get a real time response as we're having the dialogue. So. Uh, without further ado, welcome Brian A, welcome Ravi. Thank you so much for joining um, the ISV Connect live session. So we'd love to, as a kind of a great starting point, you guys can intro yourself on what do you do um, at the organization at MapTasker? And then also, what's one thing that's not on your LinkedIn profile that you'd be um, uh, okay with sharing with the hundreds and hundreds of people that either are watching this live or eventually watch it on the recording? So. Maybe Ravi, we'll start with you, and then Brian A, we'll, we'll go to you. Uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks for having us, and, and good day to all from down under. Um, like Brian mentioned, we're from Perth, Western Australia. It's really late. I wouldn't say it's close to 12 in the midnight, but uh, all good. <laughs> yeah, my name is Ravi. I'm one of the um, directors and also the product owner of, of Matt Tasker, helping with you know, building the um, the product, but also working with customers quite closely. There's one thing my LinkedIn profile doesn't say is um, I'm a travel bug like yourself, Brian, but uh, thanks to COVID, I haven't been able to board a plane for almost two years now. So it feels pretty um, weird next time when I jump on a plane. So that's me. Yeah, that's great. Hey, before we pass it on to Brian, um, uh, so is uh, what's one thing on your LinkedIn profile? Tr just the, tra the travel? Uh, I would say travel. travel. Okay. And and um, another thing, being in Western Australia, we are very, very um, popular for wineries here. It's a very um, popular thing to do on a weekend or you know in a summer break. So I do enjoy a glass of wine, uh, trying out different wines as well. Again, that's something that I don't put on LinkedIn. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> what, are you a red or white or maybe something else? What is your? Uh, I'm definitely a red. Okay, red <laughs> goes with well with my um, you know a, a steak sometimes. So um, yeah, red is my favorite. So. Fantastic. Great. Well, great, Robbie. Thanks for thanks for joining. Brian, we'll go to you. Yeah. So my name is Brian Ambrosius. I am uh, responsible for the commercial at MapTasker. So um, I'm helping out with partners and that kind of thing. And I'm based out of Perth as well. Uh, as you can hear, I'm not Auss Aussie. I'm not even British. I'm not American. I'm actually <laughs> from Denmark. Uh, where the good, good, good old Denmark in Europe, who came up with the Dynamics uh, BC and and FinOps, that was Navision, Damgor, and that kind of thing. So I worked in the, in this one here for many years. Um, yeah, so I'm responsible for the commercial. Um, I'm an Australian citizen as well now, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, so a couple of months ago, so it's pretty soon. So still Danes as well. So that's a little <laughs> bit about me. So one thing I don't think is on my LinkedIn is I am was I would say was because I was a keen singer. I sang in a wow. um, in a choir back in Denmark in my teens. So uh, I should keep that up again. So I'm promised not singing tonight, but uh, that's <laughs> I, I don't think that's on my LinkedIn. <laughs> wow, well I, that's the first time someone's ever commented they're a, a singer. So fantastic, Brian. I like um, is uh, I don't know in Australia, but is there like um, that. Uh, 
American Idol. Uh, you're familiar with the American yeah, Idol. Yeah, voice, voice yes, and um, idols and that kind of thing. Yeah, we have, but I'm not going there. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> I was going to pressure on you. That, we'll save that for another time. So before yeah. we jump into uh, the various questions that we typically ask all our great BizApps ISVs, let me do a quick shout out for the people who did put stuff in the comment window. So thanks, John. From Ohio, thank you for watching and joining today. I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, Sean Tavia. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly. So Dallas, Texas, thank you for watching. And fantastic, we have Tom from Africa, Nairobi, Kenya. So always great to see such a global reach and audience um, from all, all over the place. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So give a sense for those uh, people watching or maybe watching eventually the recording, give people an understanding, what is Matt Tasker? I mean, granted, you can kind of get a sense for those of you who maybe uh, uh, read a little bit prior to watching, uh, uh, joining this, this session and also the name, but maybe, um, uh, Ravi, you can give a sense for the people watching, like what, what does Matt Tasker do and what's the value and the business outcomes that you help solve when you then pair that with what we do with Microsoft and Dynamics 365? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, as the name says, Map Tasker, we are in the mapping space, but actually we are more than that. We are yeah. an advanced uh, GIS solution on Dynamics 365 and on the Power Platform. We've been in, uh, you know, a Microsoft partner for a number of years now, and been available, you know, uh, with the app source, um, um, uh, the app source market, and open to the you know, the global audience. As such, we provide the you know the native integration between GIS and um, and and the Dynamics platform. Traditionally, GIS you can think of is you need access to high end um, asset data, um, mm. satellite data, and so forth that has been always separate from, from the business platform. Where MapTasker comes in is, is providing that native integration between these two, um, uh, integration between the GIS and, and uh, the business platform itself. So um, in this case, we've worked with customers here in Australia, also in the US, um, in the federal space and state and local agencies, um, where we provided solutions for for customers to you know um, capture um, you know, crucial data. This could be you know GIS data, weather information, you know traffic information, etc. All these things are categorized as GIS data, but make it available within the business platform, but also provide that integration, one-on-one -on -one integration between these two um, types of data. Um, like I said, because traditionally you had another team taking care, but now we are embedded that into the into the system. It's natively available for business users to use. Um, key outcomes have we have been actually been in addition to actually providing this integration, is working with other industries that I said. In addition to the government space, we have worked in the in the mining space here in Western mm. Australia. Mining is a very big thing. It's, it's probably one of the biggest. Um, a contribution to GDP. So we work in that space, as you can imagine, but fast moving goods um, is, a, is another common um, uh, pillar that we work with. Um, but within the Dynamics 365 itself, we cover things like, you know, customer engagement, field service, uh, power apps, portals, canvas apps, you just name it. There's mapping requirements in, in every aspect of, of, um, of the platform. And uh, being an, um, you know, a, a GIS solution and being a partner of Esri, and hopefully Brian will mention that uh, in his comments later, able to bring in high-end resolution, um, high-end GIS data, making it available in all these different uh, tiers of Microsoft platform and make it really simple to business users to be able to access that GIS data, which traditionally would have been really a pain point to get access to. They might have to create a service desk request and whatnot to get the data. Now it's there, there's fingertips. On doesn't matter on their own mobile phones or they're on their computers on their browser it doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got the GIS integration story going end to end. No, I love it, Ravi, and uh, you hit it on the head because I think when most people think about GIS, one of the one biggest players they always think about is Esri. And so maybe as we go into uh, the dialogue with Brian A and talking about like what has been the Map Tasker experience in the Microsoft ecosystem. Maybe Brian, and you can talk a little bit about like how do all these things fit together? Because again, when you're part of the Microsoft ecosystem, because Esri is also a Microsoft partner, how do all these things, how, what's your perspective on how these things work? And what's that kind of engagement scenarios that allows Matt Tasker to work with another really strong GIS, GIS, GIS 
solution from Esri then then pairs that into the scenarios that you mentioned, Ravi, across field service, sales, et cetera, because of the mapping capabilities that are so uh, such a big requirement in some of those scenarios, I, I, especially I think about when you mentioned mining, like field service, like that scenario really comes into play in a field service thing where you have an engineer and I, I, I'm probably butchering, that's not maybe not the right role, but someone going out in the uh, very far reaches of, of places that people don't typically normally go. And how do you find that that mapping information? So maybe Brian, you could talk about the the experience and how does maybe the the, the, the connections to other partners work as you re, as you relate to working with with Microsoft. Yeah, and one of the things we have seen right is that we have the ISRI or ARCIS or a kind of high end kind of get uh, data around mapping, and then you have the Microsoft. So very siloed in in every company that have that. Very two company two departments that work in each kind of corner, and someone need to kind of provide the, the overview of that. And what we see in the government space, in council, telecom, utilities, and that kind of thing is that they do already have history. And we then see our partners say, uh, they are Microsoft pushing to get into the f federal space or they're pushing to get into uh, to the telecom, whatever. They have history and they say, we need that data. And Microsoft say, hey, how can we do that? And that's that's the way we have worked with Microsoft here in Australia. They know about us right now and they are actually providing us with a lot of good leads because we are the only one that right now can combine, we can glue those two worlds together. Uh, and 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 do that, and and I know Ravi will come a, a little bit back to around some use cases we have done, but as as I said, I'm from Denmark. I have worked in the Microsoft channel for many many years. I have never been hired by Microsoft, but I worked with Microsoft for many many years in ma many different countries. And one of the thing you know uh, working with Microsoft uh, is that it was not it was not easy in the beginning with the I, as an ISV because there was no incentive for Microsoft really to help us uh, and especially if you go to different countries if you go out of your home home country or home market there was you really need to have some good relationship with your Microsofts there and they they might help you so i have got a lot of help there but the co sell have really kind of helped us to kind of first go in Australia, but also kind of now to go to the world and go to US and EMEA, which is our next kind of go to market and strategy. So the COSIL um, have definitely helped us, especially here in Australia right now, Microsoft is uh, providing leads as well, which I know a lot of ISV out there now say, yeah, but Microsoft never provide us with leads. But if we have a solution that's right, but also working with Microsoft, they're actually providing leads. So I have to say, uh, uh, Codus to to Australian and Microsoft, they have really uh, put Map Task on the map uh, for us uh, <laughs> in Australia. And now we just need to go to US as well. Yeah, yeah. Just just to add to that is is what Brian said was uh, Brian A said was um, the Microsoft App Source was actually a kind of a game changing for us um, at least at least in the US market. Uh, one of our the top customers, I would say, of MapTasker who are in the U.S. because in terms of corporation. And I think they were in Cincinnati as well, if I'm not wrong, uh, or Ohio for sure. And um, they trialed out a number of solutions, mapping solutions um, on AppSource, and they landed on our solution. I think they trialed other ones and failed, where MapTasker was actually um, successful in the right first install. And then we've been, had successful relationship with them over two years now. And and yeah, now we, since then we've also got a tick, uh, the blue badge tick saying preferred solution um, uh, on the app source, yeah, at least here in, in uh, Australia, and hopefully we'll get a tick in the US as well. So the app source has been a game changer for us as well, giving us exposure to customers, you know, uh, outside Australia. No, I appreciate that, Ravi and Brian. Great insights, because you're right. One of the things that's uh, powerful about not just the Microsoft engine of working with our selling organization, but just the scale through someone going to appsource.microsoft.com, an end customer typing in a need, and all of a sudden the richness of all the great ISVs, including MapTasker, is showing up. And then a matter of that customer making the decision to say which solutions out there provide the best fit. And it's great that the that opportunity surfaced up because we do see that. It's either uh, you sending something to us, we suddenly sending something to you, or just an end customer who is leveraging our solution already going into the marketplace to identify that and you're spot on. Before we get into um, kind of the customer stories, because that will really come bring to bear some of these things um, 
of the value you bring. Uh, we have a question that came up from from uh, John. So, are you seeing changes in customer data ask or requirements through the current pandemic, and are you seeing requests that you did not see before pandemic? Because you can imagine all the stuff that's been happening <laughs> that we're still unfortunately running through have really changed how and customers and buyers have done certain things because of course the nature of having things remote work and all that stuff has Matt Tasker seen certain things where data requirements on mapping changed or has been enhanced based upon what's been happening with uh, hybrid work, COVID, et cetera. I will answer that, Brian A, if that's okay. Uh, that's okay. I would say from, from uh, interactions with the data, you know, customers and so forth, and uh, the requests have skyrocketed. I think the world has oh. changed and everyone's yeah. going digital. And, and that's in turn created a lot of data on the, on the platform itself, on external data sets, whatnot. And uh, from our perspective, it's always been the new use cases that are coming to fruition, which didn't happen before the pandemic. Now the customers want to combine this data, that data, name it. Any data that they have, if they can combine them and help them decide their next six months, next 12 months, but also managing their task force uh, in a given area. Um, uh, and, and this data sets are really helped them a lot. But but yeah, for, to, to answer John's question there, the requests have really gone up. And, and I think this is not only for MathTask, I personally feel that's across any any tech uh, solution out there. Yeah. No, I think, I, yeah if, if I can, I mean, if I just can add something, because also what I have seen uh, on the commercial side is that we, we, because we are dealing a lot with the federal and with the council kind of thing, that is, they're kind of removing red tapes at the moment because they want they want to kind of help local business. They want to, to want to put bit of money back to the community to businesses and that kind of thing. So we actually saw a turnaround from 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 lead to 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 actually sell a solution to a government fee on fee four weeks mm. i have never seen that before because they they are removing red tapes tapes and that kind of thing so that's definitely COVID have played a it's it's much easier to get into and and get get the signature and contract in the government space right now because they want to help get out yeah, that's a fantastic comment, Brian, because again, I haven't personally been too involved in a ton of public sector or government, uh, either local, state, federal side. But you, you, right, typically when you think about governmental decisions, those things are elongated over many months and months and months of RFPs, RFIs, <laughs> bids, et cetera. And to your example, gosh, if that was able to happen in a condensed period, what a great benefit, not only to them, because the accelerating time to market, like people have to, to your point, Robbie, go digital and accommodate what the needs are of what they're trying to achieve. And when that gets elongated over a year time frame, just to make a decision, it things change. And that's the thing that typically happens is that all of a sudden when you make that decision, and if it's like a year later, the economic conditions or the environmental conditions have totally changed. So when they may originally try to intend to make a decision. So that's a great comment. Um, so before we get to joint customer stories, another shout out. So thanks uh, again, may, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name again, from Pakistan. So may, it might be, it's super late, uh, <laughs> New York time watch. Well, if, if, it's, if it's almost midnight or past midnight in uh, Perth, it's, I can just imagine it's like maybe two or in the morning or something like that in Pakistan. So thank you for uh, joining. Um, so when you think about customer stories, uh, cause that's one of my favorite portions of, um, of the conversation when we do these ISV Connect lives, just to give everyone who are watching live or maybe watching the recording examples of, so when you mentioned Robbie, some of the scenarios that impact um, public sector or uh, mining scenarios across field service or sales, what are some of the examples that you and Brian have seen that talks about like, gosh, they, when they were able to, I mean, even using maybe the Ohio uh, customer example, they found your solution. Like what were some of the things that changed their scenarios because they were they, they probably were doing stuff manually or it was very hard to get the data and put it all together so the person the user using it give maybe give a, a few examples to people listening um what that had looked like some of those uh, great customer stories yeah sure thing yeah that the and ohio customer our biggest customer syntas corp um so um, as far as i understand they are one of the top three data consumption in terms of dynamics 365 in north america so they're in the top three tier of microsoft um because they have loads and loads of data 
Um, they've got over 3,500 sales staff on the road, you know, using Dynamics 365, and they had a need to see their customers and um, all the sales data, you know, at the fingertips. Uh, <clears throat> with the sheer amount of data and all the other solutions that they tried, um, you know, they got nowhere. But MapTasker was able to help them actually solve this this um, issue of, of you know digesting that large amount of information, especially if it's geospatial information. In this case, you know the addresses, contacts, etc. Mm -hmm. They were able to quickly up and running. All MapTasker had to do was geocode their data where required, and it helped these three thousand five hundred staff people on the road now to create quick appointments, do their routings, um, but also view those those um, relevant information um, that they needed to be to make decisions. Um, and so, yeah, Synthes has been trying that over two years and then we've uh, been working with them uh, quite closely. Uh, another customer of ours kind of uh, is, is a local customer here in, in Perth. It's called Western Power. They're one of the um, energy distributors, generation, and uh, sorry, they're just the distribution of energy to, to mm. uh, 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 close to 2 million customers here in Perth. So, um, and one of their challenges has been is, is how do you communicate to a you know, large set of users when there's an outage as such. Mm. Uh, this could be, uh, you must have seen in the news over the over the last couple of years, unfortunately we had some bushfires here in Australia where literally the whole country was burning. And in many instances, we have this common um, scenario in the summertime where, where the bushfires going on, or there could be a simple upgrade outside your house where new cables need to be put in. Um, and Western Power in this case was finding a better way to communicate to the customers because you might have you know, houses on this side of, on the road being affected rather than the other side, et cetera, et cetera. And MapTasker was a simple, easy to use solution where they would just draw a polygon to say, here's my customer base, or in some instances, punch in one or more um, zip codes, postcodes, identify those customers, and then use you know the marketing list to communicate to the customers via an SMS or an email, whatever the preference the customer had. And they've been using that to solu our solution again for over two years now, and it's their customer service team using on a daily basis to send out you know outages and whatnot to to you know uh, uh, covering almost you know two million customers in this case. We have another customer who's just come on board. It's the, the Department of Water, Energy, and Resources. This was a joint collaboration with Microsoft and and one of our partners uh, to help uh, the department. You know. Um, um, come up with this one-stop platform where they would do assessments on the environment where companies like Rio Tinto or any of the mining companies who want to create a new mine up uh, north of um, you know, north of the state. Any mine that you create has, has environmental impacts. In this case, they would use the Power Apps portal to submit their geospatial information where they would have some information coming from Esri or something along those lines uploaded into, into Dynamics using MapTasker. And then they have the officers um, behind the scene able to assess the applications, bring in rich geospatial information, overlay that, see the you know, impacts, the potential that mine could be doing and so forth. And then we've just embarked on the project and, and we're looking forward to work with us on this customer. It's been a joint story with Microsoft, like Brian alluded earlier. Um, Microsoft has embraced us since, you know, um, basically kicking a number of goals in the last few years. I love it, Ravi. Gosh, the, those three examples you mentioned are so diverse because you think about the first one, CentOS, and if I'm thinking about the correct CentOS, uh, some, at least if you're in the U.S., you see their trucks all the time because they're out yeah. doing either uniform deliveries because, of course, when you go to different organizations, CentOS actually provides uniforms and apparel to certain companies. Uh, to um, uh, hygiene solutions or sanitizing. They also have provide services that go in and clean buildings and all those things. So amazing example of a seller going in and saying, okay, if I cover this territory, where do I go and how do I efficiently utilize my time, which is great. Then, but also, but, sorry, but also, but, but also the territory management part of it. So there's a manager behind it have to split a territory up because they, mm. one person may be a little bit too busy. Now he or she can just kind of use a zip code or just draw the area. It can be, hey, Brian G, you have the left side and Brian A have the right side of the street. So that's how easy it is to kind of split a, a territory or a sales territory. Yeah, well, that's a good example, too, because it's not just the end seller, but that manager, that sales leader trying to identify, especially it's apropos because Microsoft just started a new fiscal year and you try to redesign, hey, what territory is someone accountable for? And you kind of go, OK, let's look at Perth and say, 
you have this side of Perth and this other person has this side of Perth. What a good example. Then you go into um, utilities and gosh, uh, it's unfortunate because uh, for many of you who have probably been watching the news, the U.S. is not uh, immune to those types of things too. A huge hurricane that the South just went undergo, especially Louisiana with Hurricane Ida. And I can imagine, I don't know the utility in that area, but that type of scenario, which you talked about with Western Power in Australia, that same type of example of being able to look at that and say, okay, how do we do more effective communications when catastrophes like that happen? And then to your last one about um, uh, uh, mining and doing submissions to where they're going to go. Um, yeah, hopefully as people are listening to this live the recording, giving you a pretty diverse set of scenarios where Matt Tasker can actually add amazing mm. tremendous value. So as we wrap up, and again, um, for those of you who are listening live, if you have a question um, like uh, was already previously asked, we have a few minutes left to make, uh, we probably can take one more. So if you have a question you'd like to ask uh, Brian A or Ravi, feel free to put it in the window and we can use maybe the, the last few minutes to ask that one remaining question. But as we wrap up, Brian, Brian A, like what, um, how, how do you, what are the things that you would recommend people learn more? I mean, besides a hey, marketplace is app source is great because that's how Ravi is a good example of how an organization identified the need and their need and how it came across to go into Matt Tasker, but give, give us a sense of oh, what's, how do people learn more and uh, maybe a recommendation or call to action if this piques the interest of someone listening live or someone who eventually <clears throat> listens to this recording. Yeah, now, but hey, uh, please, you know, be here to help, right? And we, we are partner-led and we are Microsoft-led, meaning that we are going with, with partners and Microsoft when we do customer when we go out and, and approach customers so please reach out to us but one other thing i would like to plan if something have to do with mapping think about us you know it can be from as you know from a sales part of it or up to very very high level where you need satellites you need we actually talk with some customer right now around not in america but but you know what, what was the path of that hurricane or what is the bushfire path? And so they can communicate with the customer or prospect mm -hmm. say, by the way, we are so sorry to hear about your, your your situation, but we're here to help, right? So if there's something with map, think about us. Um, and I normally say that we are kind of the Bing map or Google map kind of for enterprise data. So instead of showing restaurants and showing that kind of thing, we're showing your data on, on a map. Mm -hmm. So so have that in mind. Um, but we are a co-sell uh, preferred, meaning that um, that partners can co-sell with us and and Microsoft as well. So the two thing I want would love to is that we need we need more partners in America and Canada right now. So so the first thing if if you if that's on and Microsoft Dynamics, uh, I would love to explore a little bit more, especially in the in the government in the utility in mining, agriculture and fast moving consumer co where they're strong in please reach out to me. I will uh, flick my details uh, in the chat as well. Microsoft, I will ask you guys to, you know, endorse us and, and maybe also to kind of introduce us to the right people around America. Uh, here in Australia, we work very close with TSPs and technical pre-sales, and we, talk, we work with some of the uh, lead, uh, uh, inter industry leaders. Uh, so that's, that's where we want. But we right now we need to go to America, and, and when we can travel again, when Australia open up, <laughs> we will be in um, in America at least three to four times a year, and we will set up a business over there as well, an office. So, so my call to action, please, we we will very much like to work with partners, especially Dynamics partner. Uh, but if there's any from history here. We are an history partner. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to us as well. Um, and what we can see in Australia right now is Microsoft and Istri are doing a strong partnership as well. And they are inviting us as a, the glue between the systems. So, so I think that's my, and again, try try us, you know, we, we are on App Source. That's a free trial. If you're a partner, if you're Microsoft, just reach out to us. We can give you partner license and Microsoft license as well. So you can try it off yourself. So I think in that mind, if anything mapping, think about us as well. I love it, Brian and Ravi. So uh, some of you who saw the LinkedIn events, uh, this was in the window. Uh, but again, this is a reminder, uh, Brian A put such a great uh, set of resources uh, in this specific URL link, aka.ms slash map tasker. 
And so feel free to leverage that. Um, and also Ravi and Brian are on LinkedIn. So don't hesitate to, and include myself as well. Don't hesitate to uh, shoot us a email message connection request as well uh, with your interests, because again, a great opportunity to, to drive um, uh, future growth. And for those uh, Microsoft partners who are connected with me or with Robbie or Brian, and uh, again, what Brian had mentioned, uh, P2P is such an, uh, partner to partner is such a strong growth engine to benefit both organizations. So if you're listening to this live or maybe you're watching the recording and you're thinking, oh, I'm a Microsoft partner doing deployments and some of those examples that Ravi mentioned, think about Matt Tasker because of those scenarios that just Ravi was describing. It's like, wow, what amazing outcomes that can be delivered with the customer's data to drive those specific scenarios. So um, uh, before we wrap up um, next week, uh, we are going to have again, uh, another uh, global ISV in this case, a uh, company called Icertis that does uh, contract lifecycle management. So totally different than what Matt Tasker does, but <laughs> as we do these events, we do it every Monday at eight o'clock uh, West Coast time, Pacific time. So feel free to uh, join us. We will put a LinkedIn event in the reminders uh, again throughout this week. But uh, as we wrap up, thank you so much, Brian, A, Ravi, for taking the time. We truly, truly appreciate partners like you who invest the time and effort to be part of the Microsoft ecosystem, driving amazing, amazing outcomes to our customers because all those stories and the the insight and the scenarios that Matt Tosker lights up, what a great way to drive joint success uh, together as, as both organizations. So as we wrap up, any last minute comments or uh, question or last minute comments that you'd like to uh, um, share with the, the people listening? Uh, from my end, I would say thanks for the opportunity, Brian, uh, for having us. Um, I know it's a bit late for us, but uh, we are kind of used to this, doing this uh, with, with customers in the US. So this is the time we wake up normally. So <laughs> but, um, yeah, great, um, great chatting to you. And, and uh, you know, uh, we'll continue to follow your journey on, on, on the ISV uh, series that you've been running. So it's been uh, enjoying following that one. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll talk again. Great. Thanks, Ravi. Yeah, and, and, and I'll just I'll just say thank you very much for the opportunity to talk here as well. And if any partners out there want to hear a little bit about on on the coastal on from the partner side, uh, please reach out to me as well. So um I'm I'm here to share what I know. Great. Thanks, Brian. And then as we wrap up, um I'm gonna run a quick clip from Map Tasker just to give everyone a kind of a visual view. Thanks again for watching. Continue to be well, be safe. And we'll talk again uh, next week. Thanks again, Robbie and Brian. Take care. Thank you.